Okay, so it's an honour today to be speaking to David Lindley, uh, Lord Snowden. Um, now, David is the founder of the hugely successful bespoke furniture and accessory brand, Lindley, um, is price pre sorry, vice president of the Prince's Trust and honorary chairman of Christie's. Um, David, thank you so much for talking to me today. You're welcome. Um, now, I wanted to ask you, was furniture making on the cards for you from a very relatively young age? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say uh -huh. I didn't start making things particularly um, very early. My father was a maker. My great uncle, Oliver Messer, was a maker. Um, so, you know, we, brought, we were brought up with a making, being the cool thing to do in the house. So we had a yeah. workshop downstairs in the basement. And um, yeah, so my father used to always have designers. Um, so there were very two big projects when I was quite young, which was the um, London Zoo Aviary. Right, yeah. Um, which is being restored now by Norman Foster. And the investiture of the Prince of Wales in 1969 at uh, Carnarvon Castle, uh, which my father designed and um, sort of created the first made for television investiture, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so making was certainly always around. People were very creative around. My mother used to take us to see ballets and dress rehearsals and yes father would and um, take us to see dress designers and photograph people and i'd be an yeah. assistant uh sometimes for him um, yes. but um so did yeah. you did you do um i mean did you do woodwork at school i started woodworking when i went to beat was age 13 i made things badly before that sort of engineering type things 11 to 13 um then made sort of huts and things like that in the woods um and that's way to learn i suppose yeah so sort of swallows and amazons type stuff yeah yeah um and and where did you actually where did you go after um Beedales? did you go somewhere to actually learn your craft yeah so so after um well actually when i was about 16 or 17 we were taken mm -hmm. on a field trip i think it was called uh, to parnham house which was where john makepeace had set up this uh, school for craftsmen in wood yeah. and um, so uh, yeah we went there as a design year and uh one of the people who i'd looked up to at um Beedles was there and showed me around and he said you should apply so i said well, yeah. right so I went down for the interview and I got in. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, uh, uh, am I right in saying you prefer to be referred to as more of a maker than a designer? Well, I've always worked with Maybe design. I'm, 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 I'm suppose I'm more of an enabler more than anything else. So, um, yeah, I think... Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I can do both. Um, I tend to start ideas and then the designer they carry them on. So yes, I give them credit. I always say that they are the designer. So for instance, two or three designers have been there many, many years. It seems a bit uh, of a lie to say that I design when they do the, the work. Um, yeah. um, uh, and, and which part of the um the whole process do you find most enjoyable well i always say it's like a journey so you know from whether it's um starting the conversation with um, uh, a customer about um you know uh, what they want what their dreams are what their wish list is what they're thinking of to the finished product and you know taking them to see the workshop taking them to see the designers yeah. they're all really exciting good things to be able to do you know yeah yeah um and and were your family um uh, supportive of your career 
as it always. as it took shape. Yeah, always. Yeah, I mean, they um, my mother was always very supportive. All my my grandmother bought first things. Um, so yeah, no, I've always had a lot of family support. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and on the subject of family, um, what was your childhood like? And were were you close to your aunt, um, Her Majesty the Queen, when you were growing up? Uh, well, she's my aunt. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, and did you sort of, I suppose, get lots of inspiration from your visits to various lovely places growing up in the countryside and I suppose woods and just being outside, I suppose, probably inspired you, did it? Um. Well, actually, more of the workshops at at, um, at, some, at, uh, at Marlborough House were more yeah. of the things that inspired me. So seeing things being restored and seeing how things are made and seeing how they could take things apart and put them back together and bring them back to life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... And, um, and what uh, material do you enjoy working with the most? I, I enjoy, you know, uh, well, I've, I've worked with new materials. I've, you know, tried to uh, incorporate new materials or use new techniques in old materials. Yes. Uh, you know, as you can tell from behind me, quite a predominant amount of wood. Yeah. Uh, then we use marquetry and inlay and then different kinds of uh, metals. Uh, yes. And we've been sort of playing with graphene and graphite uh, to make the lightest chair in the world. Mm. Fantastic. So yeah, it's it's not. I suppose it's difficult to confine because you know we're creating new things all the time, and I've always said that uh, Lenny, it's always about uh, prototypes, and um, you know we're always making a next prototype. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and um, what would you say was the most unusual uh, commission you've been asked to do? Um, well, we've made everything from whole whole suites of furniture to office to yachts to cars. Um, yachts, wow. Yeah, so it's very difficult to quantify because there's so many, you know, redesigning the interior of a yacht. Yes. Uh, you no, know, is is interesting. Yeah. No, I'm sure. um, so yeah, I mean, quite a few of the projects I've done over the last. Um, Horrible to say, but next year's 40 years. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there's, it, there's a lot that we've done and a lot of experimentation, a lot of things that have been good, some things are not so good. Um, creating things, you know, that people ask for. And a lot of people sort of say, you know, why did you do that? They said, because that's what the client wanted, you know? Yes. So sometimes you're a service as much as you are a designer. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Um, and have you ever had to say no to anything? No. No, no. Because that's where you become the service. I mean, yeah, exactly. I remember various designers coming to me and always asking what the, you know, what the things were for sale in the shop. And have you ever had, you know, like a prop or something? I had a motorbike once in my, in my shop that was my father's. And Paul Smith said, is that, is that for sale? And I said, no. Yeah. And he said, well, it has to be because it's in a shop. Mm. And uh, so... Yeah, I think that, you know, we're always very keen to try and uh, make things that are saleable, interesting, inspire people, do exhibitions. You know, we've had ex exhibitions from diverse cultures, like making guitars and violins and showing the way that people make things from the world of fashion, engineering. Yes. Sporting equipment from saddles to bridles to yeah. fishing rods and guns to cars. Um, motorcycles, um, bicycles so even, much. yeah. So I, I try and use the shop like a canvas so that we can in, in, enhance and, and inspire people, you know? Yes, yeah. And, um, and talking about exhibitions, have you got any upcoming exhibitions? Well, the shop does its own exhibitions now, so right. I leave to them. So um, 
They've got more uh, painting exhibitions and artists uh, on the wall than before. Yeah. And so that's a sort of shift uh, away from the furniture sort of lead pieces, mm -hmm. gives texture to it. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's uh, on an a, any, every day, I always say that the, the shop is like a theatre, that you should always treat the theatre uh, like every performance. So we're always trying to do something new, you know? Yeah, yes. And, um, and what would you say over the years has been the most um, successful or popular product? Is there any particular product you've uh, made that's been a real hit? Well, it depends over what you call a hit. I mean, we've made things for a very long time, like the fruit bowl we've made for nearly 30 years. Yeah. Um, the Aston chair we've made for... I think 20 years, the mm. max chair we've made for a good deal of time. So all sorts of different designs just keep being remade because yes. people keep in the shop. So yeah, and it's always a difficult question because there's so many things that we retail yeah. keep making because it's a popular thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, you can look on the website and see something and, you know, it becomes a runaway success. We only bought four of them because we didn't think anyone was going to buy them so no. you know yeah uh, I suppose you can be surprised um and uh moving on to to your other uh roles um being appointed vice president of the prince's foundation must have been a huge privilege um can you tell us a little bit about your what what's involved there Yes, I mean I was only there last night actually at the uh, at the new chapel uh, at uh, Chelsea Barracks, the Garrison Chapel. Oh yes. Um, um, and they've got an exhibition of the Flora Legion there, um, which is an extraordinary body of, I think, forty odd watercolorists um, painting all the flowers and the plants in the gardens of Highgrove. And it's, really oh, wow. and it's a beautifully printed book so um and they've all ended up in grand um libraries around the world i think there's yeah. two left or something um but um no so that was that was lovely to see that and um you know i i get inspired by seeing his royal highness at work because every day he shows what a multifaceted genius um you know just sort of human being he is he's such yeah. a creep of inspir inspiring ways to keep Dumfries House going and um, Castle of May and, um, you know, now Highgrove. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, every day it's sort of about teaching people craft or skills or gardening, yeah. health and well-being or, you know, setting people out on a school of traditional arts um, around the world. Um, you know, they have 5,000 students online a month, which is amazing. That's amazing. Uh, learning different crafts from around the world. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see, you know, education in action where, you know, all the sort of things that they uh, have been talking about are actually doing. So yes. people are actually learning how to keep these wonderful ancient customs alive uh, from architecture to, you know, scything um yeah. so all, all these things which are very human in context to understanding the human interaction in communities yeah. so uh it's such a wide brief it's every day is a different thing and his yeah follow him uh on these meetings we have about six or seven meetings per day plus mm -hmm. a two-hour walk in the afternoon no lunch um so it's a, it's a very full day yes i'm sure but it's a very inspiring day and you sort of come away inspired and elated and having met rather interesting people, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's the confluence of the people who want to give and help. And, you know, I'm sure some of your uh, readers or listeners will be, you know, intrigued to want to either help with the donation or something like that, because it's such Absolutely. an inspiring result. Yes. And it's just so good all these things are so good for the soul as well yeah. aren't they yeah yeah 
Um, we uh, did a um, tour around uh, Highgrove, the garden, um, quite recently. I hadn't seen it for about 10, 15 years. It is just so beautiful. Um, it's just really inspires one to go and sort one's own <laughs> garden out um, after seeing everything. Um, it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? No, it's, it's tremendous what he's achieved. And that's what yeah. can with, um, you know, imagination. And yes. Uh, time and you know and that I suppose it's the wonderful thing of seeing what decisions you made in planting trees when and how and you know the 40 years later that he's, yeah. he's owned the place seeing the results and yeah uh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful seeing his vision yeah. yes yeah um, now uh, you were uh, made chairman of Christie's um, in in 2006 and then promoted to be uh, honorary chairman um, in 2015. What does this role involve? Um, and has it been affected by the, I'm sure it has, but how has it been affected by the global uh, pandemic and Brexit? Well, there's about 18 questions in there. Well, I know, I'll sorry. <laughs> I'll do what I do and then, then you can hear what I do now and then we'll see how the rest of it goes out. Yeah. But really, so look, I, um, I've always been a huge fan of collecting and um, I was always um, watching my grandmother and uh, friends collect over years and both my grandparents were great avid collectors. And uh, so I was brought up with um, being curious and having an uh, um, inquisitive eye and um, thinking about, you know, um, you know where what date things were from and you know my father had a, a sort of thing about William Kent so we always very uh, we sat on this rather curious place between um, modernism and um, classicism so which I've sort of inherited which is this sort of magpie like um, eye to go and um, um, see things and be interested from all departments so and when they offered the job here uh, in 2006 i was very uh, honored to be allowed to take on such a role because although it's um being a chairman is sort of multifaceted you wow. see all different departments so i was um i was on a steep learning curve i think you'd call it when yeah. i arrived and um yeah so um and um, would you say so your your what's your sort of uh, how involved are you now? So from two thousand six to now, um, so basically my role was defined by I made a remark when I arrived and I spent six months here and I was asked to give a, a small speech to a group of people who'd um, you know sort of at director level and to sort of explain myself I suppose. And I said, well, I'm very pleased to be the chairman of the UK, but it seems that I don't spend any time in it, mm. uh, which raised a laugh. And, yeah. uh, and I suppose because of that, I was then promoted to honorary chairman of the Europe and, um, cause, and Middle East um, because um, I spent a lot of time going there and I like meeting interesting new people and going and visiting, you know, exciting countries who are growing and having young cultures who are interested in making their sort of uh cultures felt and around the world so it was it was wonderful to go and fly the flag for christie's in all these new and emerging markets uh from armenia to um uh, japan kazakhstan china um you know we opened there and um so that was very exciting to see you know christie's in china and uh, and then you know, going to India twice a year, to the Middle East four times a year. Gosh, a uh, lot of travel. Well, quite a bit of travel, but, you know, mm -hmm. just sort of meeting and um, interesting cultures of people. And, um, you know, there is the thrill of meeting people and being there and, you know, seeing how they evaluate and uh, grow. Yes. Um, and, um, yeah, so 
I suppose I learned on the jobs, you might say, from, mm. you know, going to Dubai and being suddenly thrown onto the phones and, you know, here you are bidding with someone at quite a high level. Yeah, um, yeah. You have, you have to learn, learn the increments pretty sharpish. I'm sure, yeah. Um, and then, you know, in those days, we also had South Can, so it was like how you uh, made sure that they were all, you know, um, getting things in and it's a sort of uh, two-way street, getting things in and getting things sold. So uh, Yes, no, absolutely. And uh, so that's pretty much what we do now, which is uh, encouraging people to buy and encouraging people to sell. Yes. Um, yeah. And, that's you know, Chris has got a really interesting group of people at the moment, young and upcoming people who have grown with the teams over the last two or three years who are really uh, stepping into the roles. And, um, you know, we've got a very exciting uh, show on downstairs that's going to open on Monday. Uh, we've had interactions with uh, the client and uh, the team here, and he was singing their praises, saying what a fabulous team they are here for not only what they do in terms of their um, understanding of the objects, but also the layout and the design and the the feel of what he wanted to create and make sure that his ambiance is what was uh, reflected in his uh, collection coming up for sale on the 14th. So it was lovely to hear that so many uh, people are getting a really excellent report from clients who, you know, one deals with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. And, you know, these relationships are built up over many years and, you know, it takes generations and, um, yeah. you know, you know, people are either loyal to um, Christie's because they know people or they love the company or because they love the intellectual power and so forth. Uh, and uh, so every, every day I don't know what I'm going to come and see, but I get inspired by what I see. And, you know, um, must be exciting, actually. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it must be. And um, and the 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 pandemic and nothing being able to happen live has that um affected things in a very negative way not having the actual sort of the atmosphere and the well look i don't think anything could have uh, been uh, uh, particularly positive about no. a pandemic so let's start with that but i mean yeah. i think on the face of it um christie's embraced the challenge yeah uh, um you know their their sales continued a pace online and uh and became extremely successful yeah uh, we then invented and created new ways of selling so how do you make global sales uh so we had sales that were at once in hong kong and new york and london and mm -hmm. paris so um that was inventive and inspiring to to see the uh, progress that technology could give us um and the progress that we made um, with a younger generation selling new and inventive ways of selling, including uh, NFTs, of course. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, who would have thought six months ago is we'd have sold 100 million pounds worth already. So, Amazing. you know, so that it's a very fast moving world. It's a very fast moving trade. And um, yeah, so you can't ever sit still and expect okay. that. Uh, you know that you'll keep up um, yeah. so yeah it's a it's a fast-paced world that changed rapidly overnight yeah um you know we have challenges ahead of us but you know we're all uh, aware of those mm. i think people who want to continue the journey want to stay and those who don't you know naturally um yeah. move other ways so yes. i think there's been a sort of change over the last two years i suppose it is effectively yeah um yeah so so, Everyone's you know, travelling everywhere to uh, Zooming everywhere. Yes. Um, yeah. um, and how do you divide your time um, between your roles at Christie's, um, your business, and, and then also your charitable roles? You must well, have barely run off your feet. No, it's fine. I base myself always at Christie's and have done for... The last 16 years so i have an office here which is which is where i'm in now yeah very lovely and i have uh my assistant valentina here yeah and, um so that's where i base myself and then i emanate from here so if i need to go and meet someone at the shop i'll go on my bicycle there uh or in the case of last night i went to the you know the barracks uh the garrison chapel and um 
just go on my bike there. So it's very simple. Yeah. Um, um, and and, and uh, just lastly, do you have any sort of new collaborations or ideas in the pipeline for Linley? Well, we're always being inventive and thinking of new ways of interacting and, you know, how, you know, how, how lots of our ways of eating and dining and entertaining have changed so much so rapidly. So whether it's, you know, um, ventilation and the way that we consider our conditioning because of global warming or yeah. being more uh, creative about how we uh, heat our and insulate our homes. Um, so those are things that we've had to think about rapidly. And, uh, you know, this, the use of uh, sustainable materials and the, yeah. the use. Um, but, you know, I've always sort of uh, maintained that as 95% of what we made since 40 years ago is still in existence. It's quite good that there's quite a, if you look up on, um, on the internet, there's a site called uh, thesaleroom.com and, uh, and you put in David Lindley or Lindley or something, mm. uh, you'll see quite a lot of Lindley furniture coming up for resale. Yes. Um, which I call retail. Um, and so that's quite exciting. So they're beginning to have a second life of their own at different price points and, you know, they're being restored and re-loved. So, um, Fantastic. So I think there are ways of looking at the future in a way that, you know, we probably didn't think of before. Um, but how we can be environmental and getting to net zero and, you know, think of the environment and, yeah. and have contribution. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's just so interesting. Thank you so much for um, uh, taking the time um, to uh, speak to me today. It's really interesting to hear everything um, about your business and your charitable roles um now just tell me your shop um so members can hopefully pay it a visit if they haven't already whereabouts is it is it in, is it in belgravia yes yeah, so it's on pimlico road which yes. is uh, next to chelsea barracks which is yeah uh, lower sloan street um and uh, yeah, so we basically got a group of antique shops and designer shops and uh, collectibles shops. And uh, we have a market on a Saturday. It's a very vibrant place to be. And um, yeah, I'm the corner shop. And um, Jane Churchill is opposite. She's the longest person to uh, operate out of there. Um, and I went to her as a child there. So. <coughs> Yeah, so yeah, we, we've all sort of done our time there. I opened there in 93, so I'm, I'm still a bit of a new boy compared, but, um, you know, there are some good new shops which are coming up. We've got Dalesford Organic, which is another corner shop on the other side. Um, on our street, we've got Hanson's, we've got uh, Dale Rogers, um, we've got Fort, um, what are they called? Uh, Colfax and Fowler, we've got Mark Ransom, you know, so we've got a lot of nice shops yes. there. It, it, it started, I was the youngest person there by a mile um, in just an antiques district. And um, I'm probably now the oldest, um, <laughs> probably the oldest human antique. Um, so, and, you know, we just think, you know, we're very lucky. We've got lovely restaurants. We've got an Italian, we've got a Chinese, we've got a French. Um, you know, so we've got a lovely shop, uh, antiques, uh, shopping, restaurants, yeah. market. So perfect place for to spend an afternoon yeah i mean saturday Lunch morning and shopping visit is lovely. you get the market and you get yeah all sort of local and people have to come within 50 miles of london yes which um we went and talked to the council about and they said well until we think you what reason that you can't do it um go ahead and that was 20 years ago oh well you're all right you're safe probably <laughs> it started a nice idea which is that it which is again going back to the prince's um idea of walking and, and walking uh, communities yes it's that pimlico sits in a very interesting strata if you've got um you know all sorts of housing around you mm. and it's the one place where everyone comes together so yeah uh, it's you know you've got public houses you've got restaurants you've got bars you've got cafes um yeah, it's a lovely area isn't it yeah lovely area so come on down as they say and well, um 
We will. Absolutely. I'm the proud owner of a few of your lovely items um, that my father very kindly gave, has given me over the years. Um, so I must come and have a look to get some new things. Maybe my husband might give me as a present if I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, also, you've got things like, you know, your, your, uh, your readers might have things like trees they don't know what to do with. You know, there's always a nice thing to make a desk out of a tree that comes from your garden or, you know, absolutely. There are ways of celebrating anniversaries or so forth, you know. No, yeah. it's a lovely, it's a, it's a brilliant uh, present idea, isn't it? Actually, mm. really special. Um, thank you very, very much indeed. Okay. <laughs>